Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the captain. What are these? Well, I these can are, barely see it. It's the, so hard to see. <laughs> in that understated <laughs> yeah. uh, purple nuclear explosion. Um, well, it's 2019, and one of the one of the uh, one of our favourite guitar brands, uh, Ibanez, uh, launched a range of guitars called the Axion series. Axion. A X I O N. What is an Axion? It's an Axion waiting to happen. <laughs> uh, it's like a. <laughs> uh, well, there should be four <clears throat> guitars, and, I, and I'm hoping that what happens is miraculously at some point in this video, a fourth one will turn up. Um, but it's a range of mid price. Do you call mid price around about the thousand pound mark now, or is that sort of. I mean, I really don't know because people. I mean, it all depends on the person's wallet Absolutely. and what their yes. expendable income so is. So expensive for the paupers and throwaway <laughs> for the rich people. But, you know, that's why I say mid price. Um, and we've <coughs> grabbed some six strings. Pretty much everything I think we're playing here comes as a seven string option if you want it. Mm. And you've got some sexy... Different kinds of pickups. Yeah, you've got knuckles. Looks like someone spilled some fairy liquid over these. Look, they're all different colours and stuff. A I bit of oil. That sort of, is that, what, what are they just, like burnt oil or something? Well, it looks like oil. Well, let's, fairy, talk about, fairy liquid. let's talk about your guitar first. So this is from the RGA series. The A standing for Archtop. Hmm. Um, Bare knuckle aftermaths. Looks like a flame maple top. It is on a uh, Natoya body, whatever that is. But she had a big hit in the 80s. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like three people go, yeah, Natoya. Natoya Wilcox. <clears throat> Look, um, lots and lots of wood in the neck. Panga so Panga uh, and <laughs> really? um, oh, Panga Panga and Walnut, I think it is. But it's, wow, uh, Panga, it's all Panga. these names of wood that I've never heard. I read the spec sheet and I'm like, wow, Natoya. Oh, and these I probably two got, even pronounce that. These two got put a bit lower. That's what happens when you make stuff by hand with right. people with... Uh, That's what that is. Hmm? What are we <laughs> <laughs> What are we calling this finish? Uh, unicorn fade? Oh, no, no, no that brand. can't be called that. Um, That's somebody else. Probably like purple burr. Purple burr. Um, okay. Well, it's a it's a double purple burr, fairy door, locking tuners from our favourite company, Goto. Go to hell. And uh, it's an Indonesian uh, great playing Ibanez with a little wiggle switch here that splits these dirty bum huckers into uh, a slightly cleaner sound. So you're, you're on, so that's 25 and a half inch scale length, so kind of like your normal RG All of the scale. Of vibe. Uh, yeah, aftermath mm. bare knuckles, which are passive pickups. Yes. Um, but yeah, take us through some tones. <coughs> Dig well, through some tones. So, <laughs> yeah, let's start with. So obviously you've got split or non-split. It's all of the nice sounds. So functionality wise, do you prefer to have a volume knob that pulls out to give you coil tap or do you prefer to have the uh, the separate switch? Because I'm sort of wondering I why. prefer to have a uh, uh, pull out volume. Yeah, I, I think I'd be inclined to agree with you on that one. I wonder why well, Ibanez I... on this particular <clears throat> model have opted for the separate switch. Um... It, must be, it, must, it's, it can't be like a... a anything other than thinking that some people do prefer that switch there. Because if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, typically that's what you sort of do to yeah. coil tap. Well, that's how pickups have typically been wired. But I don't, I mean, interesting. 
I don't know. There's, there's really, I don't, I can't see a pro to having it separate. Mm. I mean, I don't know. Would you have just, a, Would you ever want it separate? I mean, maybe it's. Don't, it looks know. like Trying there's to come more. Up with a reason. You know what I think it is. It just looks like there's more tech going on. Yeah, maybe. So that's kind of a cool thing what's, with what's a. The, what's binnacle. the neck like? Is well, it, it feels of... um, flat, Ibanez. You know, it's it's not really really thin though. There's a bit of chunk in yeah. it. Doesn't um, look kind of like <clears throat> wizard thin, does it? It's thicker no. than, than, than a sort of like a normal. Let me give it a quick, neck. quick tunage and then a good do a, do a crunch tone. We should say Rob is not using any distortion pedals on the floor. He just has a tuner and a wah wah. And all the gain is coming from the guitar amplifier. Rob no longer needs the weirding module. Unlike myself, who is basically using a... Um, oh, excuse me, I've got my little microphone hidden. Hope you could hear me okay there. Uh, unlike myself, where all my gain is coming from my pedals. Right. It's, it's a lot of gain. Yeah, and, I like it. Um, I really yeah, like that colour. I like the feel, actually. For me, the, are... the best part of this guitar is the way that it feels. I love that natural neck. I'm loving the pliability. All of the frets are here for you Can to play. Now, I think we've got different woods. My neck, the first thing I felt... No, <coughs> this, is, this is... The neck at first on this felt a little bit sticky. So I, anyway, I'm playing... Pete! Uh, the RGD61, which again is also available in a seven string. So the D being the sort of extended range element of the model number. And as you can see now, of course, I've got a fan fret model. So the, it's a longer scale length for the bottom E string compared. So it's a conventional, I think, sort of 25 and a half inch scale length on the top E. And it goes down to something like 26 point seven or something on the bottom E string. Specs uh, will be underneath if you <coughs> want any. Um, Fishman Modern humbuckers on here. Now again, I'm a bit of a dullard when it comes to, to active tech. I was always under the impression that uh, certainly EMGs can't be coil split. I'm just wondering if dullard is politically correct anymore. I think it's okay, isn't it? Isn't just, it just, isn't it just, just a, it. isn't it just a sort of a, a, a sort of um, a slightly stupid duck is a dullard. <laughs> not a mullard, he's a dullard. Anyway, I didn't, I, I, so I don't know if this is doing some sort of computer-aided simulation of coil tapping or if it's actually doing coil tapping on the Fishman Modern. You're, someone with more product knowledge will tell you, but it, it's, it's kind of, the idea is that I've got full fat mode or I'm pretty sure on the website it describes we, it as coil tapping Really? It. Should, Should we, we quickly research? Do you know what? You're totally right. It's a Fishman Fluence voicing switch. Yeah, I thought so. It sounded like an extra so, voicing switch. God, you're so flipping good at this thing. I tell you, it just Thanks, frustrates Lee. me. So it's not coil tap. It's a voice. It's going like... Hello. Anyway, um, would you know it was the fan fret if you were immediately given? A hundred percent. Yes, you would. Because Rabia didn't when he was playing a fan fret recently. He was playing uh, Tosin Abassi's fan fret. I he don't... played it for like four hours, and then he went, "It's a fan fret." He didn't realise, did you? I just think. Just he didn't realise. I think. I think it just goes to show, to be honest with you, how little Rabia actually knows about the guitars and why it's such a waste of time ever going to his YouTube channel to watch him review anything. I wouldn't bother I going mean, there really. Yeah. Uh, it's just. No. Uh, uh, it's all about. <laughs> it's all about the hair. <laughs> Yeah, let's be honest with you. If he wasn't such a hunk of afro man chunk, uh, no one would listen, would they? That's right. Uh, no, I definitely... It's a bit weird. You know what it is? It's your thumb that uh, senses it. If you... When, right. you, 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 you gotta, if you, you go got a thumb for that sensing thumb. Yeah, <laughs> any chord that you play that doesn't involve your thumb, I think 
you don't notice. And as soon as your thumb's over the top, you notice that the relative position of the, the fret under your thumb is different to where it is no. at the other end. But, I mean, it doesn't... Do you put your thumb that far over then? Uh, yeah. I have, because I've been being taught by people like Pete Hanori and Justin Sandico, where they stick their thumbs in things all the time. I got taught by Justin Sandico. He's great. He's a great guy. Um, so, anyway, what else was I going to... I think, again, now, I'm going to go back to another... A bit of a negative, I think, on this. Oh. I don't know how close up you can get. Might have to do this as an actual close up. But uh, if you get this in the right light, you can see that they've obviously elected to not use any real grain filler on the neck. So if you're if you're not a you know, you you feel what feel like lots and lots of sort of divots and indentations and stuff on the neck as you're playing. Now, I can't decide whether or not it's one of those things where it's just like so what, like you just, like three seconds into it, you'll just forget. Or if it is actually a bit annoying, but... Um, <laughs> I'm just having a little chuckle because I suddenly realised that that riff I wrote is uh, Video Games by Lana Del Rey. Ah. Shout out to Lana Del Rey. Shout out to Lana Del Rey. Take some happy pills, lady. She's um, So... <laughs> Take some happy pills. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe oh. I, 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 I don't want to uh, mock... Good job uh, she's not a dullard. Uh, these again seem to have slightly offset. Sort well, which of, is right? Um, is, is that right or is that right? Flip it over the other way. So what are they doing? So the bottom two, they're trying to put a little bit more tension, I guess, on the uh, the bottom two strings by pulling them pulling them back a bit further. Uh, it's just definitely. <laughs> I've seen it done before, where where the where the st strings through the bodies are at different angles to change the brake angle over the saddles gives a different kind of a, a feel. Yeah. Um, so bolt on neck. Again, I think we've got some weird combination of Ash and uh, Natoya Jackson. Dad Ash. Natoya Wilcox, Natoya Jackson, whatever. Name um, one Natoya Wilcox song. Girls Just Want to Have Fun? No, that was Cindy Lauper. Natoya uh, Wilcox was... Can't think of one. I can't think Help of one out. either. Help I, I can't think of one. Natoya Wilcox. She had a lisp. Do you remember Natoya Wilcox? Had yeah. A, had a lisp. Uh, uh, oh, man. Hey, let me just give you some gain tones. Okay. Uh, so I was layering up two levels of gain there. So one was just with mild gain from the Dane. And then I was layering some extra gain from the very thing, from snake oil pedals, if I don't say so myself. That sounds almost exactly like the lead tone on Paradise Lost's album. Ooh. That was awesome. Well, that was just literally, that was two drive pedals and a, and a little bit of delay uh, into uh, a if, very sorry, clean amp. If anyone has ever listened to Paradise Lost back in the day, uh, that sounded just like it. It was um, uncanny. I love it when you hear a tone and you go, my God, that's exactly the same tone. Well, this, this is also Indonesian made. And uh, yeah, look, the fan fret thing is it probably... Well, not even probably. There's no point, I don't think, buying a fan fret unless you're really feeling like you want to drop tune your bottom E string and put something heavier on it and stop that kind of, <clears throat> you know, heavy um, oscillation on the string when you're when you're playing kind of chunky rhythm stuff. So it's probably not the sort of guitar that a cack-handed blues guitar player like myself would ever uh, consider. Or not so much a guitar, it's just not a feature that I would need. But, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the fan fret. Well, here's the question: If Fender put that on a Jaguar, yeah, and the like, drop drop D for crunchy, dirty blues, and it's got P90s, are you suddenly interested? I could certainly see a point where using it more as a baritone. Actually, no, I've liked baritone guitars in the past, so probably yeah. The the big kind of, I don't know, what have we got? Like that that riff that you that riff you were playing at the beginning. I could get into that. 
I could get into that, but I mean, I, all I'm doing there is doing this in drop D. It's not really. It's I'd really have to if, if you wanted to like the whole thing as a baritone. But really, what it's for is if you wanted to like drop A. Exactly. And normally you'd have to put like you know a, a seven million gauge on there. You can get yeah. away with less. So that's that one then. A fourth one will turn up. Right then, Mr. Rob. Hello. We've uh, swapped guitars. Yeah. Started part two of this video, uh, and now you've got the RGD. Something, something, something. What does it say on the back? Hang on. RGD 61 AL SSB. Defender of faith and trust in humanity from Ibanez. So what are the main things about this guitar that's The main is a bit features different? of this guitar is it has a neck, a body, two humbuckers, a switch for, for them, and a volume. It's very simplistic. <laughs> Hardtail. Yep. Uh, and beautiful spalted maple. And the scale length is 26.5. It is, it's the extra and, inch. Um, it's the extra inch that, that everybody everyone needs. always needs. Right. <laughs> um, so have you drop tuned <clears throat> this then to try and take um, into account? I just tuned it down to semitones. Fair enough, done. that's yeah. cool man. I was just kind of like, you know. away with the fairies for a second, but really it's... <laughs> It's the kind of guitar that you just want to keep shredding on. So you've got DiMarzio pickups there. So yes. they've, they've really put, they've gone for it, haven't they? Bare knuckles, fluences, and now DiMarzio Fusion Edge. Did I say Fusion Edge? Fusion Edge. Yeah, I've turned fusion. the, I've turned the wire off. The wire is gone. Yep. Coil tap. Anything on there? Or uh, just, no, uh, it's just, it's just, just straight up as God intended, on or off, and or which, off. which of these would you like, or both? Uh, so here's this one. <laughs> Because of the maple fretboard. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what that is. is It's all of that. It's got some shred power. Yeah. Um, this uh, woody looking side table esque guitar <laughs> uh, is actually the same as the, the purple one, just with a Floyd Rose on it. So you've got the, the sort of arch top, standard scale length, 25 well, and a half inch it? scale length. Uh, oh, that's true. It's got a, a different actual top body on it. Maybe it is different. It's woods. ash. That's ash. Ash. Ooh. Uh, Floyd, well, not Floyd Rose, Ibanez's version of a Floyd Rose, which uh, I, what do they call that now? Edge trem, isn't it, or something? So. On this slightly odd, we can't work out why different switch as opposed to here, but there we go. Humbuckers. Mm -hmm. 
This feels good. I mean, again, lots of gain on tap here on the board. <laughs> Do, do a do a dive bomb. Okay, I will. Stays in tune pretty good. I think that's my favourite one. Considering that's literally straight out the box, that's not too shabby at all, is it? Um, it's a heavy. Is Can it? I try the purple one? Oh, that's coming from that. Yeah, it's a lot heavier than the purple one. I don't know if that's like, like the floor, like the you know the trim system, or just the ash. Maybe ash is that's ash a, is heavier than body. Natoya. But you've also Wilcox. got a Floyd Rose. On there. Floyd Rose is quite heavy. I do quite like this though. I mean, again. Floyd's, a, I've ne never been one for a, for a Floyd me. Um, are those ceramic humbuckers? These are the bare knuckle aftermaths. Yeah, I think the same, same as what's in that, just without the oily looking sort of finish on, on the covers. But um, you want to give this one a yeah, blast? Man. Give this one a blast. Infinitely the better demo than I could have done. It's the best one. You like that one, do yeah, you? Yeah, I love the weight. It's cool. reassuringly like all of the weight that you need. <laughs> Yeah, it's the best Ivan as I played. Cute Christmas face came out yeah, there, a genuine me, one. It reminds me of when I first got my, my gem when I was 17. This they're, is a great Ivan as. They're a lot fatter necks than the gems though and stuff, and aren't so they? they should sort of, be. It feels, you know, more traditional like that. But anyway, there we are. Um, play some chords. Thanks, Rory, for finding an interesting point to cut this bit in. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> My God, that's so, a lot of weight on Rory's shoulders. So there we go. These are the Ibanez Axion series. As I mentioned before, seven strings are abundant, if that is your thang, but it's basically, it'll be a seven string variant of one of the four guitars that we play. This is one of the nicest Ibanezes I have played uh, in ages. Well, there you go. Yeah. Good for you. Well done, Ibanez. This this was the range that caught my eye at the NAMM show from Ibanez, so that's all cool. Uh, there are actually a couple of S series guitars in this range as well. If you if you like the sort of the, the skinnier sabre bodied ones, but just really briefly on the Ibanez mm. topic, did you see Paul Gilbert's new signature models? 
the three really, mini humbucker that RG so thing. Cool. Yeah. It Looked did really look cool, cool, didn't it? Yeah, he's uh, he's such a cool guitar player, so we'll have to try one of those one day. Anyway. See you later. Laters. Bye. Explosion. Bye. Bye.